Here is a mystery that will keep you guessing. Trans-American Airlines have lost three of their very latest high-speed airmail planes under very mysterious circumstances. In each case, the pilot, flying over very dangerous country, reported motor trouble and was forced to save his life with his parachute. Upon locating the wreckage, airline and postal authorities discovered a very valuable shipment of bonds and securities to be missing. The Department of Justice has assigned Miss Irene Delroy, clever girl operative, and her assistant, Fitzgerald, to the case. The mysterious crashes have also attracted the attention of Jimmy Gifford, roving newspaper reporter, an old friend of Miss Delroy. The finger of suspicion seems to point to Andy Andrews, the cracked pilot of Trans-American Lines, who was piloting each ship. Ernest Powers, general manager of Trans-American, has ordered the westbound passenger ship to land at Salt Flats, an emergency landing field, so that Miss Delroy, Fitzgerald, and Gifford can investigate the passengers one of whom they believe to be implicated in the robberies. The special plane bearing the trio is just landing at Salt Flat. Hey, he's coming in pretty high, if you ask me. Oh, don't worry about that, Fitz. You'll have enough to worry about when you get on the ground. Oh, uh, can you see the westbound plane down there, Mr. Delroy? Yes, right over the hangar. Oh, I hope this pilot knows the field. It don't look none too good. Stop worrying, Fitz. He's leveling off now. There, three points, clean as a whistle. Yeah, I'm glad that turned out all right. Don't forget, Sergeant. They say any landing you can walk away from is a good one. You're telling me? Hey, I knew a guy in France once during the war. I'm that... afraid we won't have time for that, Fitz. No, ma'am. We've a lot to do when we taxi over to that ship. Did you get the description from the radio man back at the airport? You mean the guy what gassed him and looted the filing cabinet? Yes, Fitz. Sure, I got it. We can't miss him. He's got a scar over his left eye. Dark complexion. A little guy, swarthy. He'll be easy to spot. Do you think the man we're after had a hand in those crashes, Irene? I don't know, Jimmy. But I do know we're not going to overlook any evidence. I should say not. You know, that guy had a reason for looting them filing cases, even if he did only take the air company's operations schedule. Did it ever occur to you that he might have taken something else, Pip? But Powers told us that there Powers was... Powers might not have told all the truth. What are you getting at? I'll explain later. Here we are at the hangar. Yeah, and there's the passenger plane waiting for us over there, see? Open the door, Gifford. Right, Sergeant. Say, who's this fellow running over this way? Uh, it's probably the airport manager. If you want to call this patch of rough ground an airport... Miss Delroy. Yes? I'm Lars, the Salt Flats radio operator. We've been holding 610 for you. Good. Any of the passengers objecting? <laughs> All of them, ma'am. They've been howling their heads off, going to sue the company and everything. They don't realize how serious this matter is. Have you allowed anyone to leave the ship? No, ma'am. Mr. Powers was very emphatic about that. We had a lot of trouble with one of them. He insisted on getting off. Said we had no right to hold him. What does he look like? Little dark shrimp. Got a nasty scar over his eye. Black hair. He insisted we had no right to hold the ship. Oh, yeah? Oh, we'll see about that. Where is he? Not so fast, Sergeant. How many passengers on the westbound, Lawrence? Eight, ma'am. We're carrying a light payload tonight. Any other dark complected men aboard? Only three men aboard, ma'am. Five women passengers heading for a convention of women's club somewhere. Oh. <laughs> They're plenty hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt it. What do the other two men look like? They're both big men. A fighter, kid something or other, and his manager. Over six feet, I'd say. Probably some fighter and his stooge getting together for a setup somewhere. They won't be your men, Irene. No, oh, ma'am. But the little guy answers to the description. He's the guy we're after sure as shooting. May we use your radio room for a few minutes, Mr. Lawrence? Sure, ma'am. It's kind of must up. I live out here by myself most of the time. Oh, it'll be all right, I'm sure. Fitz. Yes, ma'am? You go with this gentleman and get the suspect. Yes, ma'am. Need any uh, help, Sergeant? For what? Sorry, Sergeant. I must have had someone else in mind. <laughs> you shouldn't tease Fitz that way, Jimmy. He's really quite capable. Let's walk over to the shack. Do you think this fellow will turn out to be the guy that stole the Trans-American Operation Schedule? He certainly answers the description. Well, how about the pilot, Andrews? Oh, he couldn't have had a hand in it, Jimmy. He was with us. Yeah, that's right. But then maybe he... Uh... The only thing I'm hoping right now is that Andrews gets the eastbound mail plane through okay. Why? I haven't told anyone but you, Jimmy, that Andrews was carrying $60,000 in his mail shipment tonight. Gee, that's right. Boy, it'd be tough to lose that. Oh, I'm just hoping he'll get through all right. It's a terrible risk, Jimmy, but I had to do it. Why? Well, to draw the criminal out into the open. That shipment was made with the greatest secrecy. 
You and Fitz and I were the only ones beside the bank officials to know about it. You figure if there's an attempt to steal it, it'll give you a more definite line on the criminal. I'd rather see it get through safely, but if it is taken, you can rest assured it'll eliminate a lot of things that are worrying me now. Here's the house. We'll go on in. Well, not a bad little place to live. But I'd hate to be stuck out here in one of these radio shacks. Rather lonely life, I'd imagine. Just the place for a fellow who's been unlucky in love to come and forget. You know, I'll be taking one of these jobs unless you break down and agree to marry me. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> proposing again, Jimmy. You'll catch me off my guard one of these days. Well, don't waste any time and don't give me none of your back talk either. We want to ask you some questions and you're going to answer them. Uh, here he is, Miss Delroy. So, you're the dame that's responsible for me being taken off of that ship. I'll have you know... You won't have us know nothing. One more yap out of you, and I'm going to push this fist on your throat. Nice work, Sergeant. You were detained by Department of Justice orders. What's your name? Pirelli. Joe Pirelli. What do you do, Mr. Pirelli? What's it to you? Want me to pop him, ma'am? Now, that won't be necessary, Sergeant. Mr. Pirelli is an intelligent man. This is serious business, Mr. Pirelli. Unless you answer my questions, I'll have to order your arrest on a charge of grand theft. Well, what do you want to know? What is your business? I work for the Skelly Glass Company. We make beer bottles. What were you doing in the operations office of this airline tonight? What offices? Listen, Mr. Pirelli. We have the testimony of the radio operator back at Metropolitan Airport that you were seen in the general offices of that company tonight shortly before the ship took off. That's a lie! We won't discuss that. But I'm inclined to believe that it might be the truth that you'd be more willing to answer our questions. I'm answering your questions. I wasn't in no office. What time did you arrive at the airport tonight? 10.30. And the westbound left at 11.10, right, Jimmy? That's right, Irene. Well, what of it? What were you doing between 10.30 and 11.10? Mm, nothing much. Went over to the lunch stand and got a sandwich. And then? Oh, just sat around, waiting... That's all. There's nothing wrong in that. Ah, uh, listen. I've stood enough from you. I've got an important call to make in the city tomorrow. I'm not going to miss it, see? You'll miss more than one appointment unless we can get a satisfactory story from you. Where did Fitz go? Back to the ship or something. Get him for me, will you, Jimmy? Sure. Oh, here he comes now. With a suitcase. Oh, yes. Find anything, Fitz? Eh, nothing much. Hey, does this suitcase belong to you, Pirelli? Sure. My name is on the claim check. Pretty nice suitcase, ain't it? Uh, what do you mean by that? I don't believe I ever saw one just like it. Uh, how do you open it, Pirelli? Oh, what business is that of yours? Oh, nothing especially. I just like to see what's inside, that's all. Well, you've no search warrant to, that, to give you that authority. We don't need no warrant, see? When we want to open your suitcase, we'll open it. There's nothing in that suitcase that will interest you. Oh, no? Listen, Pirelli. I opened that bag out at the ship. I found out that your name is Morgan and not Pirelli. And what's more, I found these in the lining. What's in those envelopes, Fitz? The operation schedules. The operation schedules? Yeah, the same ones this guy stole from the Trans-American office. Oh, that's a lie. I don't know nothing about them papers. Let me see those papers, Fitz. Yes, ma'am. Here they are, ma'am. Mm-hmm. They're the schedules, all right. What were you doing with these papers, Pirelli? His name's Morgan, ma'am. It's all over his clothing. I found his bank book, too. That makes no difference right now, Sergeant. I want to know what you intended to do with these schedules. I told you I don't know nothing about them. Oh, yeah? Well, how come I find them hid in the lining of your suitcase? If they were there, I didn't know anything about it. Listen, Morgan. You're in this thing up to your ears. We got a description of you as the guy we're after, and you're telling us all you know about this mess, sir. Sergeant! Sergeant, look here. What is it, ma'am? This route map that I found in the schedules. Look! It's marked in red pencil there, ain't it? Yes, but do you know where that cross is located? No, ma'am. Look! This red cross is right on the route Andrews is flying east at this very moment, right over Devil's Canyon. What? What's more, look at this notation. Hmm. It says 6.55 will be over the canyon at 11 p.m. Quick! What time is it, Jimmy? We've got to save Andrews. Get him to turn back before it's too late. It's 11 now, Irene. Get Lawrence, the field man, here quick. We've got to try to reach Andrews by radio. Get him to turn back. Hurry! Yeah, he's just outside. I'll get him. You think that someone knew about the money shipment and Andrews plane tonight? There's no doubt about it. Oh, I do wish Fitz would hurry. Oh, he and Lawrence are coming now. Come on, come on, hurry. Miss Delroy wants you to get Andrews right away. Our next schedule isn't until 11.10, ma'am. We can't wait the schedule. Break in right now. Stop all traffic. It may mean saving his life. Yes, ma'am. I'll see if I can get him right now. Rolf Flats calling Andrews at 6.55. 
Salt flat to Andrews in 655. Go ahead. Andrews to Salt flat. 655 to Salt flat. Go ahead. We may be in time yet. Tell him to turn right back. Tell him to land at the nearest emergency field. Salt flat to Andrews. Miss Delroy says turn back to the nearest emergency field. It's urgent. Go ahead. Andrews to Salt flat. Everything working fine. Tell Miss Delroy I'm going on through. Go ahead. Tell him he can't do that. Tell him it means his life. Yes, ma'am. Salt Flats to Andrews. Miss Delroy says turn back regardless. It's a matter of life and death. Turn back and land. Go ahead. Andrews to Salt Flats. Okay. Turning back. Tell Miss Delroy. Go on. What's the matter? Salt Flats to Andrews. What's wrong, Andy? Go ahead. My motor just tapped. I have plenty of altitude. I'll try to send her down in the canyon. Think I can make it okay. Fast fast. Fast fast. I can see. He's gone again. Try to get him back. Go on, hurry up. Salt Flats. Oh, Anders. What's the matter, Andy? Go ahead. No answer, Miss Delroy. I was afraid of that, Fitz. Quick, Jimmy. We're leaving for Devil's Canyon. Andrews is being forced down. We've got to save that shipment. Thank <laughs> you.